Hello, welcome back again. Uh, now we're talking about cervical traction. Here we have a nice little cervical traction machine that we can utilize. Um, it's pretty easy for the, uh, the patient to run themselves as well if we feel that that's appropriate. We, we trust the patient with it. Just a few things about, uh, about the machine. So we've got some nice little cushions. This one is just to rest their head on. This one is to support the neck a little bit more. These will actually go or sit right here on the patient um, and is gonna be what kind of causes that traction. We have a little strap that's gonna go over their forehead if they're comfortable with it. If not, then don't worry about using the forehead strap. This one also, it, it somewhat puts the patient in a slight amount of cervical flexion. However, if we want to increase that flexion, cut two little tabs here that'll kick down a foot that we can um, increase the, uh, the amount of flexion. Real quick, some people might uh, be tempted to put this like up against uh, a wall or something to, to cause some support. However, if we start to pump up, you'll notice that the entire sled starts to come up, which if that's running into a wall, obviously it's not gonna do much. So we do want it to be kind of free of getting stuck on anything. If you, if you can brace it down here, that's fine, but don't put it directly up against the wall or else, well, we're not gonna be able to, to get much out of it. So we have our patient again. Ah! Come and lie down, we'll place his head there. And we check to make sure, so these aren't in perfect contact. So we're gonna just, we can take this little guy and tighten it up just until it's comfortable for the patient. If it causes pain or is uncomfortable, then let us know, yeah. Does that feel okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, are, you, are you good without the strap or do you prefer a strap? You know, I might mess up my hair. Okay, we'll leave it off then. <laughs> um, you don't have that worry. I don't have that worry. So I don't, I, yeah, I, I put the strap on me all day. No problem. Um, some people might get a little claustrophobic from it as well. And so that's another reason you want to make sure that they're okay and comfortable with that. On our little pump, it's just like a bike pump. has a little dial on the front. Um, and that dial actually turns and that's what's going to allow us to either pump or release we also have so there's they're kind of faded but there are some writings underneath there um, one says pump if you turn it to the left or counterclockwise then you get hold which means that no matter if we pump or not then the, the sled is not going to change and the the pressure isn't going to change as well um, and then if we go clockwise from pump, then we get release. And that's obviously how we release that pressure. So we'll start with pump. I didn't really mention the, the amount of pressure or the amount of pull that we're supposed to have on these machines. That's gonna be covered in the lecture, um, but make sure that you're familiar with, depending on if we're doing lumbar traction versus cervical traction, how much pressure we need to be applying depending on the, the diagnosis or what we're trying to treat with the patient, okay? Um, one thing that I will mention, if it's uh, acute or if this is the first time the patient has ever had traction, then we are gonna keep everything static so we won't have any type of intermittent pressure going on, a, a hold and relax time. Um, we're gonna pretend like this is the first time Craig's ever had this done. Um, and so we'll again stick with just some static and then I'm gonna slowly start to pump up. Now this does pump when you pull out and when you push back in, so it's a, a double pump mechanism. Um, Fancy. Yeah, that's how we do it here at Provo College. Um, if I remember correctly, I think it says in the, in the book or in the slides, let me just check real quick. Yeah. Um, for cervical, it says don't exceed seven to nine pounds, which doesn't seem like much at all, but again, if it's acute, then we just wanna make sure the patient can tolerate that. Um, with this one, depending on how much settling may go on or how much, if this starts to move, um, we're kinda of hitting that, oh, well, you can see it's going down a little bit, so we'll pump it up. 
And then wherever we get it set, we can turn and say hold. That way if the patient, we can give this to the patient, but no matter how much they pump it or try to pump it, it's not gonna change the amount of pressure that is on the machine. And then as soon as those, uh, or that treatment time is finished, then we'll just quickly go to the release release all that pressure for the, uh, the patient. Um, with cervical, again, everything else that we've talked about cervical um, up to this point, it's, it's a sensitive area, and so whenever you're doing cervical traction, just be aware of that, especially when it comes to post-treatment. Um, you may wanna let your patient just kinda lie there for a little bit and get back to, to everything being normal help them sit up so that way they're not gonna be dizzy or anything when they when they get to standing up and, and possibly fall. So um, lumbar, you don't have to worry about it quite as much, but definitely with cervical, make sure you're paying attention to how your, your patient is reacting to the treatment itself.